Hi everyone. So uh, we have here Dr. Aditya Tulat with us, and uh, he is the AIMS Merit List and Combined Merit List Rank One this time. So many congratulations, Dr. Aditya. And I hear that you are still answering your MS exams right now. Is that right? Thank you so much, ma'am. That's right. I am a third year PG at VMMC and Safdarjang Hospital, New Delhi, and my exams are due in June. So oh, my oh, MS exams oh. are going to be there. yes. So that that's quite a feat that you know you've not yet answered your uh, MS uh, final year and you already have your MCA seat in hand. Yes, ma'am. It's it's one big headache, uh, you know, gone from the. <laughs> I'm sure. Gone from I'm the sure. yes, yeah. Yeah. So um, so tell me whether like you know you always wanted to be a plastic surgeon. I did, ma'am. Yes, actually, plastic. I developed interest in plastic surgery right from my MBBS days. So we used to go to the OT and we used to see those radical head and neck cancer resections, and I used to just be fascinated how the plastic surgeon used to just come along later and just make everything back normal again. So and it continued during my MS also, and by the end of the first year of PG, I was I was sure that I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. Okay, that that's really good, you know, because many a times uh, we are still not sure, especially with uh, when we have. um exposure to multiple specialties then we are still making up our mind so obviously if you are clear from the start it does help you a bit but uh, again like each to his own some people they take some time in developing their interest but uh, it has been uh, a boon for you i think that you were quite uh, sure from your the starting of your ms that uh, you wanted to be a plastic surgeon so if i ask you um, i mean did you actually prepare for the aims uh, exam or did you do did, uh, do a combined preparation how was it i mean take us through your preparation journey when did you start and how did you plan it out uh, ma'am i actually uh, prepared for aims because you know it has been a trend in our uh, college especially our unit that many of the pgs they get it in the april session before even giving the ms exam i had seen my seniors do it so that instilled a little bit of a confidence in me that is achievable and so i started preparing on the 1st of january so i had made up my mind last year only that uh, till december and i'll just study my ms my general surgery and that from 1st of january i'll focus more on plastic surgery so jan to april i've given it to plastic surgery ma'am okay so that's that's quite you know courageous because just before your ms exams you're yes, you know so that can only happen with planning i believe without planning this can't happen yes so, ma'am it was it was a little bit of a you know it was putting me in a dilemma whether i used to uh, you know study plastic surgery or study for general surgery because it is a bit of a risky situation but i just calculated that if in april mid or even if in april end the exams are going to happen for aims then i'll have around 1 one, 1 one and a half months for a dedicated preparation for ms ms also yeah, yeah. right right absolutely so uh, i mean uh, tell us when did you start your theory preparation and you know what resources you went to how much uh, helpful were the marrow videos to you can you just uh, break up your journey into like you know paths for the candidates who are wanting to prepare for their plastic surgery entrance exams because you know see uh, the real perspective of clearing an exams comes through the candidates who who uh, actually pass this and um, i think it will be a big insight to all the people who are preparing all the students who are preparing so can you just walk us through your journey how did you plan and what all did you read sure ma'am so around one and a half year back i had uh, taken the marrow subscription for neat ss so the plan at that time was to just you know have a little bit of a knowledge about general surgery so i was focusing more on general surgery at that time and side by side after some time i started watching uh, your videos on uh, plastic surgery as well so during that time i don't think notes were available for marrow for the neat ss so i tried making notes while watching your videos but writing it was becoming very tiresome you know a one hour video would actually take two or three days to just complete and make notes and everything so notes were not available at that time so that was one difficulty that i faced so then i started looking for any sources so that i can watch your videos while having some material in hand and just make the additions what you are explaining into that right. into that material so i came across keynotes in plastic surgery so it is a, a well compiled a well compiled material for plastic surgery but it is very dry 
and it has no diagrams and it has no explanation it has just the text given there in the form of points so right. what i used to do is i used to keep the keynotes open and i used to watch your videos on that topic and whatever explanation i felt like adding i used to make that any new points i used to make those additions over there in the keynotes and so by the end of uh, by the end of one and a half month i was done watching all your videos and making the additions into keynotes so okay. that was my first reading of plastic surgery so i just mm -hmm. tried to make a compiled uh, you know compiled notes so that in the end i don't have to look here and there and just i can keep revising that right right so yeah so now we have the notes available i think that makes a lot of difference to the preparations yes, it will be much easier now easier and also then you know the students are able to take help of other materials also for example like you took keynotes and my lectures perhaps there are many people who are referring to michigan manual um i remember last year i had interviewed a candidate from um, who had qualified aims i think komal so i mean uh, she had referred mostly to the michigan manual so obviously i mean we try to combine our lectures but again you you see when we are recording our lectures we try to make it not too complicated otherwise right. you, there would be no difference from the books and in what we speak so um, i mean did did you find that the lectures were lucid enough to understand yes ma'am the lectures they i, I had a complete i had no exposure to plastic surgery at all nobody had taught me about it i just had an interest in it so i was starting from scratch and i i used to be able to understand all your videos very nicely ma'am okay. so yeah as in i think once you understand once once it's lucid then you can pick up any text so i try yes. to combine maybe three or four books but again you know as a practicing plastic surgeon it becomes so difficult sometimes to simplify things also because uh, yes. So it's like I mean I entered into my MCH in two thousand eleven, so it's already <laughs> like you know thirteen years. But um, yeah, and uh, tell me how did you divide your time between um, theory and revision? I mean, reading new things and revision. How did you revise a lot, or you just kept on reading new things? I mean, how much revision was important? Uh, so, ma'am, uh, as I told you, it took me one and a half month to just have the first reading of the notes and. all the uh, videos and everything right so by then i had not solved any mcqs and by then my marrow pack had also expired ma'am so <laughs> so uh, and uh, one more thing was that uh, marrow pack was not available just for mcqs at that time it was okay. you have to uh, purchase the whole com com you know the whole combination of videos and everything right. so i decided then not to go again for that and i started solving some mcq books uh right. which are available on uh, in plastic surgery one is shokrullahi and uh, one is uh, by agarwal question and answers yeah so there were these two three books in which uh, so during my first revision now after one and a half month i used to read a particular topic go and solve those mcqs over there and just bookmark whatever wasn't included in my notes right over there in the mcq book because it was too time consuming again to add all of that into my notes also notes yeah right, right so i have to just mark that okay this question i have to revise before the exam so that is how i went through the revisions and in all i was able to get three revisions oh wonderful yeah that's what you know uh, that's what i always tell the students that you know reading fresh things may not yield you as many marks as revisions would because you've already read something it's better to revise rather than read new stuff when you are going right, through right. so what were, how was the oski like the second stage uh, aims, aims exam like what are questions were asked from you and were you confident enough to answer that or did you think that uh, because you were uh, maybe a fresher you had some limitation because many candidates have this in mind that i've not worked in plastic surgery i don't know if i'm ready enough for the right aims. so i would just want some insight into that for the students yes ma'am so uh, it was a video conference the oski was by a video conference only so they had prepared a presentation and in which there were images only so they used to just put up that image on the zoom meeting and they were asking questions about it and the questions were uh, some of the questions were theory theory related questions like uh, you know something we have prepared in the uh, theory for mcqs and mm -hmm. some were a little bit of a practical aspect in which i had a little bit of a difficulty ma'am because oh. i had not worked in, a, in a, any plastic surgery department yet 
right right so could you just run us through uh, what where do you think were the was the difficulty and uh, how many questions were asked in the oski uh, in the oski ma'am around 7 uh, or 8 images they showed me it lasted for around 15 minutes okay do you remember the images uh, yes ma'am one was a uh, uh, abbey lip flap was there right uh, one was uh, regarding cleft palate surgery rather right. two or three images were there on cleft palate surgery they also asked me uh, the dingman retractor yeah and okay. uh, they asked me a little bit about the skin grafting they had the skin grafting instrument there the silver knife they had shown us right and uh, uh, there was yes ma'am there was extensive discussion on uh, on syndactyly okay yeah so uh, did you attend that instrument section the session that i had on did, ma you did yes ma'am right? and yeah. it was helpful because they asked some questions from that inter from that session that you had taken which were not given in any books so right it was helpful ma'am okay that's good to know because yeah cleft lip and palate i think we just can't escape that i mean you have to know each and every aspect of it be it instruments or be it surgeries i think and yeah even the lip flaps it's a hot favorite of all the examiners so you said that uh, syndactyly was asked so uh, i mean we did discuss in the theory lecture i have discussed about syndactyly but uh, did they ask technical questions also on syndactyly uh, not much ma'am it was just like what was expected at our level but okay. they were going more in the practical aspect so that uh, it was a child having uh, you know various combinations of syndactylies of both hands so okay. then the practical aspects that they were asking was that which one will you release first, first what will right. you counsel the mother right. that kind of questions that yeah. how will you uh, just counsel the parents and all yeah. so i think yeah the topics are fairly like similar there was no surprise topic i think but yeah the question so it was over zoom and then they showed you and did they show an x ray also on syndactyly because that's also very commonly asked no ma'am uh, there wasn't an x ray there was just the image image okay okay wonderful so now you are heading to your uh, answer your ms exam right so um, yes ma'am preparations will be on for ms and after that you can really celebrate <laughs> what you achieved right now yes ma'am that's right so uh, tell us three important points if you want uh, to convey a message to the people who are preparing currently and uh, maybe planning to answer in the next 6 to 7 months what are the three important take home messages that you will give so the first important message is that it is possible everybody thinks that aims is going to be so much more difficult than neat because it's always that notion that aims papers are very difficult so it is manageable if you have a preparation you know like a preparation focused towards aims mm -hmm. so it is definitely a little bit different from neat but if you start well in time and it does not require an extreme amount of time it does you don't have to start one year prior six months for i i started four months prior so it is quite possible if you just have a focused preparation the second thing that i would like to say is that uh, do not underestimate general surgery because mm -hmm. most of the previous toppers interviews that i had seen before i started my preparation in january so most of them had said that they ask questions only based in based on the starting chapters of bailey and a little bit of trauma that's it but this year everybody was surprised because general surgery was asked very extensively and uh, there was a there was a question from almost each and every topic of general surgery like there was a question on uh, on small bowel large bowel stomach esophagus so they had touched each and every topic and i had gone with the notion that general surgery is not going to be a very big problem mm -hmm. so i was little surprised during the exam but i had read those topics prior so i could manage them but yeah. that is one of the reasons why the uh, why the uh, you know why so many uh, candidates have not qualified this time mm -hmm. and so many seats are going to go wasted is because the general surgery has taken everyone by surprise this year and the third thing that i would like to say is that uh, it's you know it's uh, applies to each and every competitive exam that revision is the key in the last one month do not try to get more material just just read what you have compiled so good very well uh, summarized i think and uh, yeah general surgery is very important we've always 
like you know we've always said that don't ignore general surgery be it need be it aims i mean you have to stay on top of general surgery all the time because obviously you are expected to know what you already you know you're going to qualify your exit exam for so that i mean there is no excuse that we don't know a question in general surgery so wonderful it's been great talking to you dr aditya and uh, you know all the best for your ms exams uh, i you. think yeah you will be answering it with much ease now and uh, yes, you like also so it's it's very important to enjoy the journey while uh, we are you know doing all this we forget to enjoy the ride also so all the best and it's pleasure talking to you i hope that we really meet sometime very soon and i would uh, love to do that i would love to meet you <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am